I get the question all the time, what are these black things beside my house? Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to my meadow. And today I want to talk to you about our rain catchment systems. We use three different ways to collect rainwater and I want to share with you how we move it around the garden and we use it. I also, at the end of the video, will answer the questions I think that you're going to have and I am going to debunk at least one myth that I hear about all the time when people on the internet are talking about collecting rainwater. Let's take a look. First, we have these IBC totes. I purchased them used from a local store that resells them. They are a food grade tote that had food grade items in them before I purchased them. What I discovered in the first two years of using them is not having them covered created a lot of junk and algae in them. So I bought these covers on Amazon for around $30 and they seem to really help keep and block the sun. And I think it looks a little better on the side of my house because they can currently be seen from the street. How this is set up is our gutters have been cut to the height of the top of the rain tank. Then using a simple extension, I have reached over to the lid of the rain tank and the water simply flows in. I hope to eventually install an overflow system and leverage that water down this additional side garden, but I haven't completed that setup yet. If you've ever done any research on this type of a system, you will notice that I do not have a first flush. But what I have done is something that was very affordable. In the gutter at top, we have a sponge that was designed to help filter the water and keep the downspouts clean. My IBC totes came with lids and I found on Amazon this round screen that is designed to go over a dryer vent well, it fits perfectly in the middle. I used a four inch hole saw, drilled a hole in the middle of the lid and just popped that in. It's not sealed or anything, but that helps keep the debris that gets past the screen, keeps it from going in there. In the original setup, I did not have concrete underneath it. I had concrete blocks and I did a terrible job leveling them. And as we got more and more rain, it washed out and the blocks were sagging and it was causing water up against my house. And so when I had an opportunity to put a concrete pad under this, I did. And we have one on each side. The other thing it does is it gives us that extra height. Now we're fortunate that our yard is sloped, if we can call it fortunate. And because of that, I use this rainwater currently with a gravity fed system. I simply have a hose attached to it and then I use and drag a hose, frankly, around the yard. At the time that I'm making this video, I am recovering from shoulder surgery and reaching underneath the tank and turning the big handle off and on is difficult for me. But this, I can turn off and on with my thumb. That allows the water to flow and that cuts the water off. Additionally, I have this quick release valve here. And so I've got a quick release here and a quick release here, male and female. And for the same reason, because I'm working one handed for the most part, I can easily just push this back, separate this hose. And I have this lead hose. So now I can simply put it in a bucket or a watering can without having to deal with the big valve that's underneath the tank. From where we're standing here, the furthest garden bed is about two feet lower. And so I am able, when this is full, to get enough pressure from gravity to hand water the garden beds down there. That does take a lot of time, but I am using free water and I get to inspect the plants and spend a little time seeing what's going on in each of the garden beds. In the front of the house, we have a different kind of rain barrel. I purchased this on Wayfair. I was really glad I found it on clearance, but it allows me to hook up a bypass hose, which you can see just above the top of the barrel. We cut the downspout in half and simply inserted this bypass. Now 100% of the water doesn't come through and we have the downspout 
that continues out onto the driveway for the overflow of the water. I don't have a water faucet at the very front of the house. And so this is really nice for me for watering in some of the little house plants around the front door. And the one adaptation I made to this barrel is I replaced the faucet that came with it with a ball valve. This allows me to have a much stronger water flow right up into the point that the water reaches there. There's also the original faucet that came with it down here, but I don't use that very often unless I need to connect a hose and drag it somewhere else. Before I had the system set up with the other big rain tanks, I sometimes would connect a hose to this to water the fruit trees in the front guild. One of the things that I really like about this is it sort of blends in with my house and people don't typically notice it until they get right up to the door. I could even take this hose off of it. I should put a quick release on that as well. And then it really wouldn't stand out at all because it wouldn't have that white hose pointing right to it. The third way that I collect rainwater, I won't be able to show you exactly. You're just gonna have to trust me on this. In three different places in the garden, I am collecting rainwater underground. If you've watched another one of my videos, you may have heard me mention that the side yard and our houses slope together. It's a little harder to see now that the garden bed is in, but basically I've built my garden beds at the bottom of my slope and I'm able to take advantage of water coming off of the neighbor's house and water coming off of my house. And in two different spots, I have the equivalent of 100 to 200 gallon cutouts below ground that I have filled with wood, debris, mulch and other things so that underground the water can store and in fact i believe that is part of the secret to why this fig tree is so amazing i never water it it's only getting the water that it can collect from the rain and the ground underwater rain tank that we have we created the same kind of system for our banana circle underneath all of that yard waste is about a 100 gallon hole in the ground that I filled with old logs. And then when it rains, because this is the lowest part in this side of the yard, all that fills up and feeds all of these lovely bananas and taro and now sweet potatoes that are coming in this bed. I can't access it, but the plants can and they seem to love it. Now that you've seen the three different ways that we're collecting rainwater for our garden, let's answer some of the questions I believe that you're going to have. And if you have questions that I don't answer, please add them to the comments below. This works great when we help each other as a community learn and grow. So thank you for that. Number one is, did I buy new or used IBC totes? And I bought used. I spent less than $200 per tank at the time, including having them delivered to my house. What was in the tank before I bought them? I was assured that it was food grade, and the one thing that I checked for is that there were no poison stickers or corrosive stickers or anything unbecoming that were warnings on the outside of the tank. If the tank had some kind of a warning label on it, I would not have bought it. The next time I buy them though, I want to know precisely what was in the tank. Because even though it's food safe, one of my tanks had some kind of a gel in there and I know that it was a food safe gel, but it was a pain in the butt to clean it out. And so next time I wanna know what it is and if it's not an actual food item itself, I probably wouldn't buy it. I was so aggravated, frankly, when I was cleaning them out the first time that I almost wanted to just put them on the curb and order brand new ones so I wouldn't have to hassle with it. But a brand new tank delivered is somewhere closer to $600 for one. And I just wasn't really in a position to make that kind of decision at the time. So I worked it through, cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it and finally got it to where I felt like it was to the point that we were getting good rainwater in the tank. Number two, where did I get the sponge filter for the top? bought it at Lowe's. I was looking in the gutter section and they had these simple gutters. They're like a leaf guard that they go into the 
gutters and maybe they're designed that you buy a bunch of them so you completely keep all the leaves out of your gutters i don't try that for me i simply have a piece that's about 18 to 24 inches long and it's situated right over the downspout and it seems to really be helping keep things out it's not perfect but it does help number three what are those screens on the top Again, those are dryer vent screens, but I found them on Amazon. A company that makes them for dryer vents is remarketing them as a cover for an IBC tote. And it's perfect. It is perfect. I literally took my four inch hole saw, drilled a hole in the lid, and it popped right in. And then I just screwed that lid right back on. Number five, I've lost track of what number I'm on. What about mosquitoes? In the closed tanks, I don't worry about mosquitoes. They're all closed and they have a screen on them so nothing can get in there to lay an egg. I will say that in the past they were open and it was a problem. So at the time I was using the BT chips in order to reduce any of the mosquito larvae in the tanks. I also have used that over in the banana circle when we are really seeing some mosquitoes come up. But honestly, I haven't seen very many. I don't love using BT. I try to use as few chemicals in the garden as I can, but I also can't have my backyard completely overrun with mosquitoes. So I have to do my part if I am going to collect rainwater and have it around the yard. The next question, where did I get short hoses? Those are honestly just leader hoses that you might get for the kind of wind up hose reel. And so those are just short leader hoses that I bought. I think the white one in the front was considered to be an RV supply hose. And so I purchased those at my local hardware store. I've purchased them from Target. They seem to be readily available. You're just looking for a leader hose. And when possible, I look for a food safe hose. I want a hose that's been made with food safe items so that I'm not putting any additional toxins in my food as I water my garden. How do I plan to do the overflow? Currently, I have some two inch pipe, and what I want to do is put the two inch pipe somewhere about four inches near the top of the tank. I want to have some room for it to get above that so that it can flow out. I don't want it to be right at the top so there's no room. Then I'm going to drop that down and attach a pool hose so that I can move it wherever I'd like to in the garden. Now the pool hose may not be food safe, but it's the easiest way that I could think of so I could roll it up and put it in and out of the way. And the volume has to be big enough because when it rains here in Florida, it really rains. The next question, how much water do those tanks hold? The two big IBC totes are 1,000 liters or about 275 gallons. In the front, I believe that was a 90 gallon tank. And so what's really interesting in a heavy rain, these IBC totes in a heavy rainstorm can collect in about 15 to 30 minutes all 275 gallons and be completely full. So in the rainy season, I use the water from the rain tanks as much as I possibly can so I can maximize the benefit of using rainwater around the garden. How else could you collect rainwater if you can't do one of these totes? Well, there are lots of ways that you could collect rainwater. One really simple way is if you just have an old trash can that is, is clean enough for you to use the water out of. You could even do something as simple as setting up a tarp and funneling it into the trash can. At mom's house, before we installed all these kinds of rain barrels, her gutters came to a sharp corner and when it would rain really hard, they would overflow faster than the downspout could handle the rain flow. We literally would just drag trash cans, 30, 40 gallon trash cans under the edge and that gave us rainwater to work with in the garden. If I couldn't work off this slope and have gravity to work with, how else might I do this? Honestly, one of the best ways to get more pressure is to increase the height of the rain tank. But you can only go so high with a tank that weighs a ton once it's full. Think about that. One gallon of water is eight pounds. That holds 275 gallons. So it is really close to a ton when it's full. So you want to be very careful about what you put it on in order to raise the height. 
In my case, one of my future goals is to build a little solar station and actually use a solar panel to charge a battery and use a transfer pump and have the watering system run off of a transfer pump that is being powered by solar. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I saw another YouTube video do that and I really loved the idea and so it's been percolating in the back of my mind. What is a first flush system? It is an extra downspout and typically made of a four inch PVC so that all of the first water that comes out of the pipe that contains the debris from the roof, any kind of bird poo that's on your roof, any leaves, they go into this tubing first that you do have to manage and maintain. You have to dump it once in a while. And then it rises up. Once it fills up, the, the heavy stuff goes to the bottom. Then the cleaner water goes over into your tank. Eventually, I would love to have that. But when I was looking for all the parts, it just wasn't feasible. During COVID, we've seen the price of building materials skyrocket and supply chains be very limited. And the pipes in order for me to do it at that time were well over $100 per side. And I felt like that $200 I could use in other ways to benefit my garden. And now before we wrap up the video, I want to talk about this myth that it is illegal in most places to collect rainwater. The reality is it might be illegal in some places. So for your own jurisdiction, Google that. Look at local laws. Look at your HOA. I don't live in a neighborhood with an HOA, so I can have that rain barrel at the front of my house. In my city, we actually have rain barrel classes. So if it was illegal in my city, why would they be hosting build your own rain barrel classes? Google it. There may be some concerns in some cities about collecting rainwater because people may collect them into open containers and not treat for mosquitoes and create a mosquito hazard or create a water hazard for children, or create a water hazard for pets. You need to look at your own local laws and find out if it's okay in your particular city or jurisdiction. Just because someone wrote it on the internet that it's illegal everywhere does not mean it's true. And I think this goes for all the things we see on the internet. Do your own research. Find out for your specific location what you're allowed to do and then implement what is right for you that you can afford to do that you can take advantage of this beautiful wet manna from the sky as it were so you can water your gardens and plants thank you for watching if you like this content i would appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to see more about what's going on in our suburban garden feel free to subscribe and then click the bell notification then YouTube will let you know whenever I release a new video. Until next time, my friends, make sure you're drinking plenty of water and wear your sunscreen. Have a fantastic day.